Hi guys, this is Ali from TechShare. Today I'm going to describe about Redis, Redis Cache. What is Redis Cache and why we really need this Redis Cache? Well, so you can see the name implies the, the definition of Redis Cache itself. So Redis Cache means a cache, but this is kind of a distributed cache. So think of a scenario that your enterprise application, web API or web application, whatever, need, need, needs to serve some data from the database, right? So you might store that data temporarily in your memory cache in that server, but in a scenario where you might have, uh, you know, a lot of different, different boxes. So for example, your web API might have scale up to, for example, six or seven boxes or whatever, then what would be the approach to cache that, that data in a, in a centralized location in a distributed way so that your other box can also access that data? your other server can also access that data. So that is only possible if you use this enterprise data cache kind of thing. So Redis Cache uh, supports that. So, and I'm going to go through today about the Redis Cache and how we can leverage the Redis Cache, especially when we are gonna get it free for up to 30 MB. So 30 MB free means, you see here, I have used, I have a test application I have created a small e-commerce application. The name of the application is Village Smart BD. You can see here. And right now it has used almost 3 MB, only 3 MB data. 3 MB data is huge data actually. And so far my site is working pretty fine. I'm gonna uh, show you how how it works right now. And also <clears throat> currently I also uh, explored the analytics and I found that every day there were around 300 to 400 hit per hour sorry it's not that not per hour for i mean in a day i found around 1500 to 2000 requests coming to our website so this is kind of not bad and our redis case this free version is actually supporting quite well so let me show you how it works so this is a e-commerce application that i have developed using my uh, e-commerce engine that i have created and there is there are a lot of other videos you will find in my channel how can you create this kind of uh, you know e-commerce system uh, so es especially e-commerce uh, engine and you can actually you know create different different uh, storefront through that so probably i will create a series of different different videos in future but today I just think that this is a storefront that i have uh, created so if you see here i the, i'm gonna show you today the performance you'll see here the data right the data is, data is coming quite quite fast so let me refresh one more time although this is now running in my local but doesn't matter because the data is also coming from the not my local but in the in the in the database the live database so that's why uh, you can compare this one even if i if i use my uh, hosted application this one then you will also see the performance is not that bad so it is now loading and then you will see immediately it will load all the data so you see the data is not that you know small so this is like around three two to three seconds we will get this kind this amount of data and then this is, there is a presentation as well. So for example, if you go to the second page, then you will instantly see the data is loading. So there is no kind of, you know, uh, downtime or this kind of thing. And again, let me browse my, our range page and you will see that <clears throat> our range page. So this is in production, by the way. Production means my live site. And here you will see the data is coming. And as you actually, you know, um, uh, scroll down, then the data will automatically gets loaded. You will see here. And you will see like, you know, this is kind of, you know, uh, there is no lacking or nothing. So it is working like really, really fast. Now I will explain how actually I accomplishes that on. So let me tell you one thing. This site is running live using uh, um, some users in our country, in my country, Bangladesh. But uh, my idea is, you know, um, I really did not spend a single amount of, of, of money for that to, to implement. I will explain all the things in details, maybe in my second Work. I, I'm, I'll, I'll create a couple of videos to explain that, how you are gonna accomplish that. But for now, what you will see is the data, a, a lot of data, you know, this is live data, a day amount is live, everything is live, and then you will see it is coming quite fast, and um, you, you really did not see any any visible latency here, right? So this is like really, really fast. And how it actually works, I'm gonna, uh, you know, explain that on a bit now. So now, this Redis cache that I got um, free up to 30 MB. So if you go to this subscription, then you will see it has around uh, 30 MB free and the uh, uh, server is Southeast 2, blah, blah, blah. But basically I am using this Redis cache 
and uh, let me explain the redis cache here so you will see here i will actually first explain the approach that i took for that so i have stored all my product okay so right now look this application this um, application that i've created here is not going to support uh, millions of products it can but that's you know if that will come then i need to adjust the application in that way but right now the thing in my mind is you know this kind of small e-commerce application might support up to 5k or maybe maximum 10k products and that is not a small amount of products it is it's still a big amount of products right so <clears throat> considering that what i designed this way like you know you have your redis cache here and redis cache will store all the products so this basically if you see here this product products by category right so this stores all the products number one number two as you um you know explore different categories then i also store the category cache here so this is our global cache means if a single user uh, hit our website then if that cache is not there it will populate that cache it will store the cache in the radius and all the subsequent user that is going to hit next will use the same cache means you know they really don't need to wait a single second so Im immediately it will it will get the data from this Redis cache. So that's the concept. So concept is fine, working fine, even though it is not gonna support up to, it's not gonna support a huge, uh, large amount of data that I already explained, but yeah, it's not bad for a small, you know, kind of uh, storefront or you can say, a, you know, shop. So now, the thing I'm gonna explain now is uh, how actually implement the Redis cache. So what you need to do is, first of all, uh, you need to go and create your subscription here and you can use this you know you can select this one that is free 30 mb quite fine so you'll see here all the data you'll see here everything is you know stored in that redis cache that i already explained to you and you know it's only <laughs> it 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 gets only 3 mb for so far so we can even you know push a lot of other data as well so in terms of time let me show you the time here in the network tab so you'll see here so I have two requests. So the card is taking a bit time because this card is, you know, I really, I mean, I cannot cash the card. Yeah, I mean, I can cash in a certain level, but you know, in order to be safe, card is something like, you know, I also deal with some data from the database. That's why it is taking a slightly a bit time. So you'll see here the second, um, it's actually taking 2.52, but interestingly, this products by category, that data is coming from the Redis cache and it only took around 830 millisecond. Can you believe this? So let me just go another another category. So for example, our range. Our range is also using the same kind of thing. And then you'll see here, uh, okay. So it's ac actually taking um, similarly, I mean, on to two seconds or sometimes three seconds or, you know, because this product category is also dealing with some other things. So that's why it's taking a bit extra time. But overall, you'll see here, this, this is actually taking a very, very, very less amount of time. And this is only possible. Okay, why it is taking a, you know less amount of time because product by category has a presentation so that's why it's not loading actually all the data but you know it has some sort of things that's why it is taking slightly less time so it is around 888 millisecond but if you go our range basically try to pull all the data from the redis and as you you know scroll down then it will populate the data so overall it is taking around two seconds or something this is still okay quite okay so now in terms of implementation what i have here is you need to do that and then let me explain the the server side a bit really really easy so for example if you uh, if you see my implementation here the redis implementation what you need to do is the redis client okay so you need to you need to install the redis package uh, first this is pretty thing pretty basic thing then the redis port you are going to so okay the, this redis port and this server host and everything you will be getting from here so if you see here these uh, settings then you're, you're gonna get everything from here so this is your uh, blah 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 so here you can see so the endpoint is that and then um, uh, everything is there so we need to get the information from here and then we can use here so this is the host uh, this is the host and then what I have here is pretty basic thing. So you have the get 
cache async so by default this redis client doesn't support the asynchronous thing uh, but i use that i'm i have created a kind of wrapper function which actually return a promise and then that way we can actually you know get gets the support of async so get cache async then set cache async so you can use set set ex means you can also assign a expired time as well with the set so for example here you will see this data the ttl you will see if you see the ttl ttl means time to uh, to leave so it will keep you know storing with until until this second so you know i intentionally put a larger kind of um, amount of seconds so that you know it will be there i really don't need to delay every time to update this one but yeah obviously if you for example if you upload your products and then there is a publish mechanism in my system so if you publish for example you, you upload 10 or 12 or 20 whatever the number of products and then you can publish those products and then i make sure that redis is being cleared from that you know back end system so that's that is the way you can actually maintain the you know kind of flow and life cycle of this you know memory cache uh, sorry redis cache so here so this is the thing i mean then what you can do is you can if you see here it's like i really want to I'm going to show you the implementation a little bit here. So, so this is the get products from Redis. So what we can do is we can use the Redis client and then get cache async. We can pass the key and it will simply, you know, uh, if the key is exist there, then it will return you the data. That's all. And um, yeah, so the my 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 purpose, or you can say the my intention was here. So every time I look for that cache key, if it is there here then for example this is actually storing the all the products that i told you before so it will uh, you know it will see if there is any such key present in the redis and it will pull all the data from here it will not go to my database i'm using mongodb database this is also free i will explain later you know later video about that one but that is the idea so mostly i really don't hit the mongodb mongodb is is heated a very rare occasions when a user try to add a product to the cart when there is an, any sort of update mechanism happening extract the cart i mean converting your cart to order so this kind of thing when happens then actually we go and grab um, data from the database or try to update the database otherwise everything is you know happening in the redis so that's the way this is really really efficient and you will see uh, let me refresh the page again and you will see how fast it is it's literally very 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 fast so you know i mean you really don't need to worry about the performance of your application so hopefully that is uh, quite uh, quite enough for today so here um one more time i will tell you is the pretty easy thing you need to install the redis package and then uh the if you explore the package then you will see how e easy easy it is so it has some function get set and that's all all right so i think that's all for today hope we'll see you very soon and then okay next video what i'll do i'll try to explain how you actually implement the redis cache in your sidecore commerce engine so that is my second video going to publish maybe next week or very soon uh keep keep you know following my my channel and then you'll see that obviously and uh, if you did not subscribe yet then subscribe my channel push the bell button so that you get notification when i publish in a new video till then have a nice day nice evening nice night bye bye